Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. This is uh, the follow-up for my uh, latest SHTF uh, scenario slash travel video um, where I want to discuss a few of the things um, that we did in that uh, scenario video and discuss some of the uh, sort of the background of that stuff and how we go about uh, doing things when we're out and about on the move. Now, um, most preppers are homebodies. They're going to want to uh, bug in and just kind of hunker down and just see how things transpired. But sometimes there are circumstances beyond our control where we have to go out and about. But then what happens if something larger takes place, some type of uh, disaster, world event, uh, something else takes place while you're out taking care of business, so to speak. So uh, that's basically what... Um, this discussion here is going to talk about now i normally don't write notes for my videos but i thought this was the was very very important so i actually took some notes here for this particular um video because i don't want to forget anything i normally just do uh, my videos off the top of my head keeps me sharper but um so i'm going to refer to my notes here and go over uh just a few of the mindset things and a few of the uh physical items that we take along um, when we prep and how we go about doing that stuff. And the first thing that I want to mention here that I got in my notes is uh, what they call being switched on. Um, and what that is, is being observant constantly. If you know something's happening, constantly be aware of your surroundings, constantly be aware of what's going around you, keeping your head on a swivel. There's a lot of different terms for it, but it's basically just have a heightened sense of awareness and observation of what's going around you. That right there can help people. You can see something ahead of time, and that right there is going to help people um, avoid potential problems. You see something that might be a potential problem, you just automatically go ahead and uh, you avoid it. And uh, the next one here is uh, something I've said in lots of videos already is keep your gas tank full. And uh, gas is sort of the main thing that's going to keep you from a thousand mile walk. Um, you know, you can train yourself to walk 50 miles home. You can train yourself to walk 20 miles home if something goes wrong, like at your workplace or school or something like that. You, you can walk 20, 25 miles, maybe 50 miles in two days. You, you can force yourself to do that. Most people um, can. But if it's a longer trip, 1,000 miles, 1,200 miles, you, you're going to have a hell of a time walking that. There's going to be so many more dangers and infinite things that can pop up. So keeping your gas tank full. And then this goes to another thing. If something is wrong, there, there's an electrical uh, disruption. The pumps aren't working here. And this can go for a lot of different things. Stores, gas stations, pharmacies. If they're not working here, maybe 30 miles down the road, they are working. So that little bit extra gas, because you're constantly keeping your gas tank full, will get you from a location where things aren't good to where things are good and that could be as little as 30 miles and the way vehicles are nowadays that's maybe only a gallon or two of gas so you know when people say oh well when you get to half you know get your gas tank to half full you want to fill it up i say keep it full all the time every opportunity you drive you know 60 70 miles you pull into a gas station you have to go to the bathroom or whatever take that opportunity to fill your gas tank up always keep your gas tank full and uh human intelligence uh, human intelligence means talking to people. Um, talk to people at the gas station. If you're in a hotel, talk to people at the lobby. If uh, you go into a store, talk to people at the store. Talk to the people in the local area what you're at. Just be friendly about it and try to pick up information on what's going on in this area. And it can be good for a lot of different things. General travel stuff like where's a good place to eat, where's a good uh, store to go to to get this or that. But you can also get news. Hey, is there anything going on right now? Is this a safe neighborhood? Hey, if we uh, take a couple of wa walk, a uh, couple of blocks down, is that all right? Is, is there, do you guys see any problems with that? Ask these questions and then you can start building your human intelligence network right where you're at. Even if you're just in a hotel for a couple of days, you can pick up a lot of good information um, by doing that. And uh, in the scenario video, it was a, a world event. It was a large world event that took place and that caused us to basically try to get home. And um, there's usually a window 
between when something happens to before all hell breaks loose. I watched it in 2020. I watched it because um, I was still going out in 2020 and I was watching what was taking place in my local area. Now, the window can be very short sometimes. It can only be a few hours. Sometimes it could be a couple of days. But if something happens, it's going to take people time to realize what's going on. And if you're sharp and you're with your observation, if you're right on the ball with that, you can notice stuff before things take place. And you can use that narrow window to get you and yours to safety. And... Uh, the best thing is observation. You can say, hey, you know what, this is going on. I can see where this might be a potential problem. So now, you know, we need to act on this right away. Don't delay, basically. And uh, like I said, I seen it in 2020. You know, I seen the panic buying starting to slowly pick up and it took a few days. But if you were on the ball right at the beginning of that, even if you didn't have any preps or anything whatsoever, you could have probably stocked up a little bit if you could have got in a day or two before everybody else panic bought everything. And uh, local news, you know, local news is um, going to be TV, it's going to be newspaper, it's going to be observ observing the local area. It can be a lot of AM radio stations will have uh, better local news on and more timely stuff than they will be, let's say, on a local TV channel. So you want to keep an eye on that local news because, you know, large world events can affect you, but it's going to take longer for that stuff to affect you than it is the stuff that's locally in your area. There could be a war that breaks out on the other side of the planet, but if they're rioting down the street from you, that's your immediate danger that you got to uh, uh, work with. Um, firearms, stuff like body armor, that kind of stuff. And I know people that travel with rifles, with long guns, because, you know, that's what they feel that they need to do. Now, I'm a little bit more low-key. Everything that I do when I'm out and about is low-key. My body armor, if I think I that the situation warrants it, I'm going to have that underneath. I'm going to have that all hidden. I don't want to give up uh, that element of surprise, so to speak. The same thing. Most of the states around me when we travel are reciprocity states, so my CPL, everything is concealed. I, I carry everything concealed. The only thing um, that might be a little bit different of that, there might be some situations where a helmet would be good to wear, but then again, you're going to stick out. You're not going to blend in with the environment, so those are the kind of things that... Um, you know, kind of is more advanced, but still I would go with a low key over um, something that uh, sticks out to a certain extent. But um, maps, um, we carry maps, we carry um, atlases of all the states and all the surrounding states. And we also carry atlases and maps for uh, states that we might have to go through. If something else goes wrong, we have other states. And another thing, you can pick up maps. Most places, um, gas stations, information centers, anything that's got anything with tourist stuff, uh, hotel lobbies, are going to have maps of local areas. I never turn down a free map. If I get a free map of area, I just pick it up and I throw it in with the other maps because they got little bit of little tidbits of information in that you wouldn't necessarily have. You don't always depend on your GPS. How many times is a GPS, you know, when everything's working now, how many times has a GPS failed people and, you know, routed them somewhere they were you couldn't get through? So GPS is all right. It's fine. You can use it, but you always want to have a map so you can fall back on that and always plan out your routes ahead of time. And uh, that's very important. Traffic. Now, when I did... Um, the scenario video, I took shots of just traffic that we seen on this trip. There was nothing going on, and their traffic was terrible in some spots. Now, imagine what that's going to be like if there's an actual SHTF event. It's going to be, the traffic's going to be even worse than what it was, what I showed in um, that video. And look at 9-11 as a perfect example. All the planes were grounded, and that was something I also mentioned in that video. All the planes were grounded because of... Uh, the air traffic control situation. That was a hypothetical situation that I put in uh, the scenario video there. Um, but if that happened, anybody that was trying to get anywhere is going to have to rent a car or get a ride and are going to have to drive somewhere. So that's going to increase the traffic again. So that was something that actually took place. So that was something that I actually pulled out of a actual event that happened because the, the flights were grounded for several days after 9-11 uh, and 
that's what uh, what happened. People rented cars and started to started to drive to different places um, to get to wherever that they needed to um, go. Uh, back roads are another thing. Um, back roads are typically less congested, but they're going to take longer to get there. So you have to go again back to making sure that you have gas. But then again, on the good side, back roads are going to take you to places. Um, if something doesn't work in a larger city, it might be working in uh, out in the country. And you might have a, an opportunity to get gas, pick up some supplies, whatever you need. Again, talk to people. You might be able to pick up some intel about what's going on. So knowing your back roads, taking your map, highlighting everything, that is going to help you out um, tremendously if something goes uh, wrong. Cash. Cash is king. Preppers always talk about cash doesn't have any value in SHTF. Cash doesn't have any value in certain cir circumstances, but in a lot of circumstances it does. And people don't look at cash as a survival item. I look at cash as a survival item because if you got a whole boatload of cash, that can help you out. But there can be situations where you like I used in the scenario video where cash um, was used because you had been we had already been gone several days, week, whatever. Um, the cash might already be gone, so then you have to replenish that. So then, as you go along and you use your cash, you know, use your electronic means to replenish that replenish that cash. And that doesn't always have to be at an ATM. It can be at a big box store. It can be at any store that gives you cash back on your purchase. It's a lot more low key to take a hundred dollars out of a big box store than it is sitting at an ATM machine, let's say at ten o'clock at night. So that's uh, that's the thing with a uh, cash safe houses, friends. I've mentioned safe houses before in uh, in other videos. Having friends, knowing people between point A and point B, if something does happen. You can get a hold of them and say, hey, something happened here. It's going to take us longer to get home. We can't go the route we wanted to. Can we crash at your place? You know, have friends, but then be a friend for them as well. And uh, it's a part of, uh, you know, that community building. Preppers always talk about having a community and a prepper community. That safe houses is a huge part of having a prepper community. Have people in different locations and different places where you can crash at and they can crash at you at your place if something um if something happens. Um, snacks, um, that was another thing. Uh, snacks, we always got enough stuff in our vehicle. We literally could live for a couple of days out of our vehicle with just the um, um, snacks that we have in our vehicle. And typically when we go on road trips, I'll be constantly buying snacks. Whenever we stop somewhere, I'll buy a few more snacks. And that can be anything. It can be crackers. It can be a jar of Nutella. It could be a jar of peanut butter. It could be uh, pickled bologna. That was something that we bought at this particular um, trip here. It could be a you know, um, jerky. It can be sausage. It could be local cheese from a, a particular shop. Just just pick up little snacks here and there and add it up. And a lot of times when we come back from a trip, I got more snacks in the vehicle than when we did when, uh, when we left. And those things, if for some reason restaurants are closed or you can't stop to get uh, food in more conventional means, you always got that food so you can keep going. And that high energy stuff, I'll tell you what, can really, really make a, uh, make a difference. Um, water bottles. Um, water bottles. Buy a couple of water bottles at the beginning of your trip and then uh, fill them up so they're always uh, full in there. We got our packs with us, so we always got water all the time. Always get these bottles where you can screw the mini Sawyer right on the top. And that way, even if you're getting questionable water, you can still run it through a mini Sawyer out of these bottles before you can uh, use it. And the same goes um, uh, for... Uh, um, other bottles that you got in uh, in your vehicle that you carry. I always try to have a bottle that's uh, compatible with some type of filter. So then, if you got to get water out of a you know gas station bathroom or whatever, you can always still um, use that. Uh, what else do I have here? Communications and uh, communications. A lot of preppers will talk about the the bale fangs and the UV five Rs and stuff, but you don't see a lot people talk about just plain old walkie-talkies. Now, these plain old walkie-talkies uh, work really good for shorter distances, several hundred yards typically, but a lot of times that several hundred yards is all that you need. And these are cheap. These are 20 bucks for two, 25 bucks for two. A lot of them got push-to-talks and uh, the push-to-talks are 
easy enough to conceal. You can take the radio, you can put it in a pocket, you can run the push to talk up to your ear. You know, you got something hanging out of your ear. A lot of people got um, headphones and stuff hanging out of their ears right now. And uh, just because of, you know, they're listening to their phone or whatever. So it's not that unusual to see somebody with uh, something hanging out of their ear and maybe talking into a uh, earpiece. But again, you know, if there's two of you, you got to split up for some reason, like going into a store, going to check something out. You can use that push to talk to uh, communicate, hey, you know what, there's something going on here, pick me up here. And I like like we did in um, that particular scenario video. But uh, it doesn't always have to be the big fancy radios or the ham radios or whatnot. You can get by with using um, just a cheap walkie-talkie that uh, you can just keep in your vehicle, charge it up from time to time, and you're good. And another thing, I did the Jason Bourne joke when uh, we were in the scenario video there, too. Um, don't be squeamish about using this stuff. You know, don't think, hey, you know, it's weird to have body armor on with some medical in it underneath my coat because we're going through a urban area. Don't think it's weird that you're taking a walkie-talkie so you can be in communication with your wife or a loved one in a vehicle out in a parking lot if something's not looking right to you. Don't be squeamish because you're using those preps that you basically put in place to um, give you a safer, better time and give you an advantage if something does go wrong. But anyway, this is a Modern Refugee. I appreciate all my subscribers out there. I hope you guys got a little information, a little entertainment out of this video here. Please put... Um, your comments down in uh, the comments if there's something that you guys do when you're traveling or if you looked at my scenario and there's something hey you know i can add to this conversation please feel free to add to that uh add to that conversation in there and share your ideas with uh with everyone uh, out there that's uh, watching this video and i'd also like to thank my wife for uh, participating uh in uh, the scenario video this time uh, because a lot of people will uh, travel with their spouse and uh, I thought uh, she should uh, participate in this one as well. But anyway, I appreciate each and every one of you guys out there. Add your comments, add your uh, opinions, and uh, add your uh, two cents into the, the conversation here because you know what? We all learn from each other and that's how we get to be stronger. Anyway, you guys have a good one.